At five and a half feet, weighing 70 to 80 pounds, the harp is a colossal musical wonder. The skill and workmanship that goes into the making of a harp boggles the mind. Each harp is individually tediously handcrafted, wrought of the finest maple, beech, and spruce, and plated with solid brass, sometimes 23 karat gold leafing. It is composed of thousands of parts, 1,400 in the action alone, the system that shortens and lengthens the strings. There are 90 more parts in each of the seven layers of linkages. All in all, under the careful hands of master and apprentice, around 90 days of work are needed to complete one finished harp. Most people don't realize is that the harp is made of both wood and metal, so there's a lot of metal working that goes into it, a lot of woodworking. The woodworking is maybe two months total from start to finish, and the metal working is considerably shorter, but a lot of that gets done on the outside, parts being made up. So. Ideally, I would imagine to make one harp, you a machinist, a spray man, a woodworker. You have four or five different disciplines are involved. Fortunately, most of my help here has previous experience. We are training one or two oh, new yeah. people, and depending on the aptitude of the person, can take anywhere from one year to five years before the work of salt. Since we're a new company and we're, uh, we're on the younger side, we have a tendency to experiment a lot. So we do use a lot of um, traditional hand tools and so on. But we are also willing to try out new technologies, new materials that other companies might balk at just because they're not used to using them. And being so small and new and young and crazy and all that, we we actually enjoy getting into some of the newer tools and methods. Chicago, believe it or not, is Harp Central. There's, oh, we're new, and then there's another company that's been around for about 20 years, another company that's been around for about 100 years. Uh, Lion Healy Salvi is the one that's been around for 100 years. The big uh, heart maker in Europe, the Salvi Company, bought the big American company about two years ago, three years ago. Harp-like instruments have been around since as early as 1200 BC, found in ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian civilizations. The lyre and cithara of the harp family were more prevalent in Greece and Rome. But these were harps without a pillar or column that could produce only low-pitched notes due to limited string tension. The frame harp, ancestor to our modern instrument, was invented in Europe, probably by the Irish, during the 12th century. Hundreds of years of improvement and innovation have paved the way for today's modern double-action pedal harp, which is fully chromatic throughout its sound range giving it the widest range in an orchestra. Well, a harp has 46 or 47 strings on it. When you add up all of the tension on all of those strings, it's well over 2,000 pounds. So there's a lot of stress on a wooden instrument. So the whole thing has tended, it's, it's built to self-destruct eventually. So the whole thing sort of collapses in on itself, gets pulled together. So this piece pulls up, that one pulls down, that one falls out. I would imagine the part that bends the most would be the soundboard, though. None of them are really fragile because they're, they're built to withstand all this. There's the neck, which is the top part, and the strings are attached to that. There's the column, which is a long pedestal type of thing. It's the body of the harp, which 
soundboard lies on, strings are attached to that, that's like the box on a guitar, it's a resonator. And then there's the metal part with pedals which hook up to rods that hook up to an action that tighten the string up similar to a guitar fret. Each string is shortened by the action of two discs with protruding studs that are coordinated by one of seven pedals, one for each note in the octave. Pushing a pedal one notch turns a disc and tightens the string, which raises a pitch a half step to a flat. Going a second notch turns both discs, raising the pitch to a sharp. That's how our works. Yeah, you take the, I take this whole thing apart. This right here, which is called the action. You take all that apart and the main, the main reason you're doing it is to, is to come inside and fix anything, any kind of noise. Because when a harp is usually playing by itself and it's real subtle and it's quiet. And if there's any noise when he's hitting them pedals or changing, you know, changing keys, octaves, then that's irritating to a harpist. It's got to be all quiet. So the main objective is checking these things for clicks and repairing them so there's no noise, basically. This is part of an action. This is uh, this right here is an E line, E, and uh, there's there's uh, there's seven different lines. They're all different keys. So what you see on these pedals, when you when you switch the pedals into different positions, you get different octaves. The harp is essentially the impossible. The width of a triangle spanning six and a half octaves would be too long for the musician's arms. The solution mathematically was to condense everything together, equalizing the space between the strings. The result is the harmonic curve, easily accessible and fully chromatic. There's only certain models that we'll be building. We'll customize them to a certain extent, but very limited extent. You can get them a full-size pedal harp. You can get them as uh, low as eight or nine thousand, and spend as much as thirty thousand, depending on the amount of gold and carving and fluff that goes on. Swanson specializes in necks and soundboards, general repair, and complete overhauls. We've seen harps that needed repair after five years. I've seen harps that didn't need repair and they were 70 years old. So it depends on how well built they were in the first place, if they are used or abused, or even what area of the country or world they were used in as far as um, temperature and climate, that sort of thing can have an effect on it. Here, an elite crew of professionals, including some old hands from Lion and Healy, invest painstaking work day in and day out, diligently devoted to their trade. Well, Lion and Healy was okay. Uh, I, I, like, I like it here better, because Lion and Healy was like, as far as the way they did work, it was kind of, it was one dimensional. You went and did your little job that you did. I did a lot of different little jobs there, you know, but you re the, I think that the concept is better here because the, the way they had you there, you really didn't, they didn't teach people about the overall workings of the harp, you know, what happens further on down the line, you know, what you should be aware of. All you knew was do your part and, and that's it here. It's, uh, it's a lot different because you, you get a better perspective on everything, you know. Like I work on actions, but uh, it's it's more uh, it's more helpful even working on an action when you know what the the whole working thing is supposed to do. Why this is the way it is. I was with them for believe, twelve or thirteen years. Come from a musical background. I was trained as a guitar maker and I was looking for work doing anything and I just sort of stumbled onto Lion Healy as a heart maker in between um, shoe store interviews. 
We have one guy who's got like 10 years experience, but he's only been with me for six months. We've only been here a year and a half. I have another guy who's been here a year. I worked it alone for about six or eight months. Swanson Harps, founded in 1989, carries on the tradition of Chicago's Lion and Healy, harp maker to the world for over a century. Their expertise is second to none, and their work ethic uncompromising. This is the House of Harps, and to the men of Swanson, it's a second home. Harpists want good work, and if they can find it here, they'll come here, and hopefully that's what we're supplying is high quality work, and it doesn't matter if they're some high school student or symphony harpist. We've worked on harps from both ends of the spectrum. You, you need patience, you need skill. If something goes wrong, it has to be right. And if something goes wrong, you can't go throwing things across the room and go stopping off. You have to get it right, or we're out of business.